Hello everyone, my name's Matt and I've got a bit of a secret. Inside of my laundry room, behind this little white door, is my absolute abomination of a home networking setup, but that all ends now. In today's video, I'm going to be pulling everything out and creating a home network setup that's much faster, more organized, and more reliable, and I'm bringing you all along for the ride. Now this definitely isn't a guide as I'm a networking noob and I did make some mistakes which I'll go over in this video but I think this will be interesting or at the very least entertaining for some of you out there. So let's talk about the equipment I currently have and about what's staying and what's going. My router is this TP-Link AX4400. It's a dual band gigabit Wi-Fi 6 router. This does have the ability to add Wi-Fi access points, but it's honestly worked very well for my home, even with it dangling down like this. I might mess around with a custom router in the future, but for now this TP-Link router will be staying, but I will figure out an actual mounting method for it. I have some ethernet cables running out of the router directly, but there's not enough ports so I also have it connected to a very basic gigabit switch. This switch is definitely not staying as I've been wanting to upgrade to 2.5 or 10 gig networking which is surprisingly inexpensive nowadays. These devices are falling out of a 30 inch Legrand on cue media enclosure and entering into the enclosure is 7 cat6 cables that came terminated with RJ45 connectors and about 5 coax cables that I'm currently not using. Below this media enclosure is my storage server sitting on the floor which definitely isn't ideal and I will be downsizing slash relocating this in a future video in a couple weeks so make sure to stay tuned for that. Also if you're wondering where my modem is it's in the garage under my workbench. My ISP spectrum told me that's where it had to go which is kind of annoying for a reason I'll get into in a minute. When I moved in here I kind of just threw together the minimum network setup required which has worked fine so far but it's definitely time for a change. So now that you have an understanding of what I'm currently using, let's get to organizing and upgrading. The first order of business was to pull everything out including the switch, router, and mounting panel. The way the runs are configured is I have internet and cable in coming into the center hole and then ethernet out on the left and coax out on the right. I don't need the coax cables so I decide to try and get them out of the way the best I could by pushing the majority of the cable length into the wall then zip tying the ends barely outside of the hole. I did this for the right coax cables and the center one which I assumed was where cable TV would be coming in but I found a different white coax cable on the left which I presume is actually Actually where cable TV would come in. With those out of the way, I was left with just the ethernet cables. These again are cat6 cables and came terminated with RJ45 connectors. Before I do anything with these, I wanted to figure out which cable went to which port in my home. To do this, there are a couple of different tools you can use. I opted for a simple cable tester which you can get for like 10 bucks or less, but if you do pick one of these up, know you usually need to buy a 9 volt battery separately. If we plug one end of an ethernet cable into the transmitter and the other end into the receiver and then turn it on, we can see it cycle through testing the 8 different wires in the cable. But for my purposes, if I plug the transmitter into one of my ethernet wall jacks and then plug the receiver into each of the runs coming into the media enclosure, once the receiver starts to light up, I'll know which port slash room that particular cable is associated with. Of course on the first one it was the last cable tested, then I can go ahead and slap a cable label with the room slash port name on it and I'll know exactly where the cable is run to. This is helpful for troubleshooting and will be helpful for me in the future as not every connection is going to be running at the same speed. So I just went through for each cable, testing and figuring out where they ran to. I use these neat little cable labels that work well, but if I did this again I would write out my labels an hour or so before applying them as I did end up smudging a fair few of them by applying them directly after writing. These are also useful if you're the type of person that has a million cables connected to the back of your PC, again for troubleshooting and management. So now the question is where will I be plugging all these cables into? And this is where I had to make a decision. If these cables weren't terminated as RJ45 connectors, I would have definitely went with a patch panel. And while I still could have gotten a keystone patch panel with pass-through couplers, after doing some research and consulting Reddit, it seemed like just plugging them directly into the switch is the best option. With that being said, I may end up terminating these into a patch panel eventually as these are copper core and are best not to be moved around slash handled too much. 
So internet from my ISP will be going into my AX4400 router, but from there I wanted to distribute it through a fast switch. After looking at all the available options, I stumbled across a really appealing looking switch that seems to be an insane value for the money. This is from a company called Giga Plus, and it's an unmanaged switch with 8 2.5 gigabit RJ45 ports and 2 10 gigabit SPF Plus ports. It normally goes for $90, but it currently has a 23% off coupon, bringing the price to below 70. This is perfect for me as it had exactly enough ports for me to hook everything up to 2.5 gigabit for now, and then in the future I can move my PC and storage server to the 10 gigabit SPF ports for ultra fast file transfers, and likely even the ability to edit 4K videos directly off my NAS which would be awesome. Now like I said this is an unmanaged switch which is fine by me as I personally don't need a managed switch, and it being unmanaged keeps the price down. Now besides the switch, the other main piece of equipment I wanted to add to my setup was an uninterruptible power supply, or UPS for short. I live in Florida where it's not uncommon for power to flicker during thunderstorms which are very common. Every time power would flicker, my modem, router, and even sometimes my storage server would reboot which was incredibly annoying. To solve this problem, I decided to pick up a CyberPower SL700U which would have more than enough power for my router, switch, and storage server while also being thin enough to fit in my media enclosure. This guy has 8 outlets, 5 of which are on the battery backup along with 2 USB ports for charging charging, and even a USB port on the side for monitoring. Now ideally, I would have just bought one UPS for all my networking equipment, but because my modem is in the garage, I'll need to buy a separate UPS for that to keep it from rebooting when the power flickers. I've seen some mini UPSs online, but a lot of them seem to have bad reviews, so I haven't picked one up yet. With that being said, if you guys have any recommendations for a small and affordable UPS for my modem, let me know in the comments down below. I decided I'd be mounting the UPS and switch inside of the enclosure but wanted to mount the Wi-Fi router in a higher and more open area for better signal and to make the media enclosure less crowded. So I grabbed my switch and UPS and started to figure out what placement and orientation I wanted them to be mounted in. To mount the switch, I bought this OnQ mounting kit with a plate mounting hardware, and some cable management pieces. It came with two options I could have used to mount my switch. First are these pieces that twist in, then have top pieces that ratchet down on the device, which after messing around with these seemed very insecure. There's also these other twist in pieces that are designed to slip into the mounting holes on your networking equipment, but these also seemed incredibly insecure, which was disappointing. So I just used tried and trusted zip ties to attach this to the plate, which was way more secure than either of the first party options. For the UPS, I decided to mount it to the plate that came pre-installed in the enclosure. I originally tried to use the included velcro, but that would have blocked too many ports, so I used that for lateral support and again used zip ties to support the weight of the UPS. So with those mounted, I plugged in the power supply and attached it to the enclosure using the toolless locking pins, and those zip ties look like they're struggling a bit, so I'll probably try and find a more sturdy mounting solution in the coming days, but for now, this should work fine. Then I attached the switch and plugged in all the ethernet cables. I started to push the excess cable length into the wall when I realized I was jumping the gun a bit as I still had to figure out where I was mounting my Wi-Fi router and how I was going to get the cables to it. After thinking about it for a bit, I decided I'd mount the router on the wall above the media enclosure and to cleanly run the cables, I'd add a pass through in the wall here. I got this little 2 inch pass through panel that fits into a 1 and 3 quarter inch hole and then have these wings that flare out and clamp onto the drywall keeping it into place. So I started to measure out where I wanted the center of the hole and I'm sorry for blocking the view in some of these shots, trying to light and film this stuff which is in the corner of my small laundry room was pretty difficult to do. After double checking my measurements I checked to make sure there were no cables leaning up against that part of the wall by filling in with both my fingers and a pen. I was super cautious of this as drilling through an ethernet cable especially the one bringing internet in would have been a costly and time consuming mistake. Once I was sure there were no cables in the vicinity, I carefully drilled a pilot hole, making sure to go the bare minimum needed into the drywall. Then I carefully cut a circle using a hole saw, and this is where my big mistake was. I thought I could catch the dust using this little paper tray, but ended up sending some dust onto my equipment, which could have been easily avoided by not being lazy and removing them before drilling, which is what I should have done. 
I didn't harm anything, but I shouldn't have risked it in the first place. Then I inserted the pass-through port and tightened down the two screws to secure it. Next I grabbed my router and decided how I would orient it on the wall. I decided having it face up with this ridge on the back lined up with the top of the pass-through would be the best option. I was going to mount it on the back mounting points using two screws, so I measured off of the pass-through plate and off of the top of the enclosure to get the two places that I'd attach the screws. Once I was sure of the placement, I drilled two small pilot holes, then two larger holes, inserted and hammered in two wall anchors, and then screwed in two screws. Test fitting the router, and I was happy to see it was a success. To route the cables, I did have to remove the pass-through plate and was able to push through the internet in Ethernet, another Ethernet cable to send a signal to the switch, and the power cable. These were routed through the pass-through and the plate was reattached to the wall. Then I plugged these in and routed them behind the router, making sure the Copper Core Cat 6 cable didn't have too tight of a bend in it. With that done, I decided before cable managing everything, I should plug everything into power and make sure it still all works. So I plugged everything in, turned on the UPS, and after a few minutes, the router and switch were up and running, and I tested to make sure my wireless speeds were normal, and to make sure my wired speeds were also normal, which both were. So at this point, all that was left to do was cable manage everything, which only took a couple minutes to get things nice and tidy. With that done, things were looking way better than how they started in the beginning. Now something to note is this door still won't fully close because I'm routing a power and data cable down to my storage server, but like I said before, I will be addressing that in a future video. So all in all, with a few hours of work, I was able to turn my mess of a networking setup into a much faster, more organized, and more reliable setup that even has room for expansion in the future. With that being said, I'm interested to hear what you guys think of my setup, what you think I did well, and what you think I can improve. I'm still very much a networking noob, so any feedback would be greatly appreciated. So I think this wraps this video up. I know this was a little different than the normal content I put out, but I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Oh, and as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.